Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of Unscripted on the Sofa with uh, Mark and Flavio. Welcome. Yeah, so today um, we're going to talk about a street photographer. In fact, uh, a photographer who, you know, when you see his work, you'll, you will go like, wow. Mm, uh, he's not yeah. that well known in the UK unless you're a street photographer fan. But uh, the guy's uh, Vinit Vora. I think that's a pr right uh, pronunciation. But uh, he's based in India, Delhi. Yeah. And uh, I think he was Leica's first ambassador in India. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, he is a is an exceptional photographer. Sure, he really is. Um, he's a photographer that uh, I I met through Instagram. Let's say I just started a scene on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's just entertaining. It's just incredible what kind of pictures he takes and uh, what the th the scene, things he sees. Mm. As, really as we'll see, you know, his mindset is totally different. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I know we've spoken about mindset and practice and, you know, we all, we all get good at certain things and you can see uh, Vinit is looking for this type of image. Yes. Because yeah. they're very, very different. And I think most photographers... Wouldn't see those. No. Let's no. just look at them because it's it kind of explains. Yeah, it let's really. give it. Uh, shall we give it just a bit of an idea of who he is uh, first? Of yeah. course, of course. I just got a couple of notes here for to give a short introduction to him. So, uh, he's from Delhi, uh, born there in uh, 1973, and uh, both his brother and uh, his father were uh, artists, working artists. Okay, and uh, he learned to see. Uh, learn to see that's the right way to say it sure very very young and he started seeing uh, uh, moments or started seeing uh, details and things um, that he wanted to capture and sure. that's how he became sure. a photographer um, didn't start with street he went into landscape he went into fashion and other things and then he just fell into street and he never stopped from there and just stayed on to street cool uh, and uh, he founded the APF magazine uh, okay. together with the brother, which is uh, Rohit Vora. Hopefully, pronounced right. And we'll stick a link in the uh, description beneath. So, if you want to subscribe to the magazine, it'll be there. Yes, and uh, the brother is also a street photographer, and both of them are like ambassadors. Oh wow! So he's a good street photographer wow. as well. So let's look at some of his work, shall we? Yeah. The last thing is that he has a book called Serendipity, that's oh, okay. been published by iShot. Wow. So it's been published probably a year or two ago. I think you've got the book, haven't I, you? I've got the book, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, fir the first picture we're gonna talk about, it's one of those images, you just it just grabs you and you just look at it and you just think, wow, I just would never ever have seen that. Just a dog walking on the streets in Delhi. And you know, there's a lot of random dogs walking around in India, so it's kind of a good subject to use. Yes. But I just love the way that he's he's waited there and he's looking for the the, the decisive moment yeah. and he's looking he's sort of micro composing it to the nth degree i mean really micro composing oh, yes. to get his tail in exactly the right position to make his tail part of the background which mm -hmm. is the bus yeah so he's chosen his background he's yeah. waited for his subject to come into it. all things we've spoken about before absolutely that we use but he's just taking it to a different level absolutely and you know the uh, inexperienced photographer or uh, the non-photographer would say oh what a lucky shot and i think luck has very little to do with this i this think is a lot of work i don't think any of his shots. pictures uh you know luck is in, in, is uh is involved in them and you know this second picture with uh you know using a mirror and the background actually two mirrors of course yeah I yeah. didn't see the second one to start with. Yeah. It's, which is even more interesting yeah. to picture that way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But um, no, again, I love it because you know, you've got this guy who's just standing there and it's obviously not his head, it's a reflection, but he's micro composed it. So the, the person's reflection is growing out of the guy's body who's behind the mirror. Yeah. Uh, whereas the other one is a pure reflection. Yeah. And then you've got all the other sort of bits. But that pure reflection adds a frame in the frame, a yep. head in a space, etc. It, it's just... And all the techniques going on here, you know, you've got reflections and then you've got heads in spaces. You know, there's no heads sort of crossing over each other. You can see the nose on them all so you can identify all the people. Again... Layers. Yep, layers. What, three, four layers there. Yeah. Um, a great 
a street photograph. And this is one of those that you say, oh wow, when you see it, and it just keeps you in the, in the shot and just ent entertains you. Mm. And this is another one, like the one with the dog before, uh, it just makes you smile when you see it. And uh, there is no doubt about what he saw and what he wanted to do, and it works so well. Mm. Uh, mm. It's just self-explanatory, perfectly composed, uh, nice diagonal that gives some dyna dynamic sure. uh, look at the picture. Uh, it just... It almost looks like it's the the tie to his, his sort of dress. Yeah, you would see it like that. I see it as a uh, torch. Oh, okay. I see the ray, the ray of light of a torch. He's holding a torch, but yeah. you know, again... But it's the, yeah, we do, that's the great thing about the street photograph and something that makes you curious, that you can interpret your own mm. thing. You can mm. see your own thing. Mm. But both of us say, wow, in the same way. And it's these things, you know, we keep, keep banging on about every week. You know, he's chosen the background. Yeah. And then he's got the decisive moment. Yeah. You know, the feet are off the ground, so it shows us the, the sort of stride of him. And, uh, you know, he's camera unaware, so great, great picture again. Yeah, okay. wow. Um, and again, you know, this sort of thing isn't luck. You know, he's waited there. You know, these things do happen in India, and I know he's blessed with, you know, some interesting people, but he probably thinks there's interesting people in the UK and Absolutely, London. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we always think uh, the that's grass is greener. That's normal for him. Yeah. yeah. That, um, that's his everyday uh, environment. Uh, but, you know, he's, there's a kid jumping off a bridge or off, off of the, the, the side of the, one of the gats, gats. Would you think? Yeah, yeah. so the side of the gats, Probably I think. Were and he's di diving in and yeah, he's timed it with a, with a boat. And he's, again, it's about decisive moment. Um, Micro-composing. And yeah, head in the sky. So, so there's no lines going through that guy's head. And there's all these little techniques going on there that, you know, as street photographers, we all should be practicing all the time. Yes, absolutely. And this again, it's such a uh, great thing to have seen because uh, how do you uh, see this happening beforehand unless you have a mind that already saw those two, how would you call them, the supports for the car? They're, they're like uh, car jacks. But car jacks. And you already have seen them and you think of doing something with them and then you see the flip-flops flip coming and you wait for it and you mm. get the right shot. But again, this is those techniques we keep we talking about. He's chosen the background. He's seen this backdrop yeah. of these two orange. Um, and, and, you know, he knows a lot of people in India wear flip flops. Yeah. I mean, they just do. It's that type of country. So he's chosen his background and then he's waited for the right person to yeah. come into the frame because you can bet your bottom dollar there's probably not, not, not that many orange flip-flops around they're mainly blues and whites and blacks yeah but he's waited and waited for the right person to come in yeah and then he's caught it the decisive moment you know, the foot off the ground rather than sort of both flat-footed and uh, yeah the juxtaposition between the two is just you know amazing yeah and i even like the random hand just sort of hanging down yes yeah um, you don't need to see his face it's not about his face it's about the juxtaposition between you know the orange flip-flops and the orange and i would say vinit vora it really is juxtaposition to the nth degree isn't yep. it yeah it's just a master in juxtaposition as we see on the next picture as we see in this picture you know, yes. who would have thought three pictures of you know some chickens would would be a great street photograph yeah but then when you put these little sort of taps next to it that that are there you do see these sorts of things in the street and i've probably walked past a picture like this a hundred times when i've been in india mm -hmm. and, it, and i just haven't seen it because i'm not attuned to that type of thing absolutely but wow three beaks three red taps yeah <laughs> and it just works so well yeah. doesn't it there's not much else to say it's just great but you know guys you know check out this guy on instagram because you know we've just picked half a dozen pictures but literally they just go on and on and on it's just they're in a different level if you like this sort of this little sort of quirky things yes and this humor yeah. in your pictures but you know you've got to study these sort of things or look out for them and, and boy it's quite hard but i think it's it's such a as you just mentioned study he is such a good way 
to learn what juxtaposition in street photography means. Sure. Because I think that is where you really learn how to to look for these things, what to look for, what your subject should be. Mm-hmm. And then it could be just a a project or a day out just to learn that. You only look for those things. Mm-hmm. You just mm-hmm. stay attuned mm-hmm. to those things just for the mm-hmm. whole day and something will come out. Mm-hmm. And something you will get be. inspiration from these things. I mean, this next image we're, we're seeing, I, I got inspiration from this image when I was last in uh, in, in India because uh, I saw a guy holding a newspaper up and it had a hand going across it that mirrored his hand on mm-hmm. the other side. Uh, and I got that from this. I, I started looking for these sort of things and uh, I just love the way the fact that this guy is holding up a newspaper, reading it, probably totally unaware of the photographer taking the picture. Absolutely. Um, you know, he's, uh, but he's used the picture on the newspaper as his head. And he's probably sort of just moved himself around a bit just to make sure that it's absolutely right. Um, you know, again, this is... Um, yeah, there's not a lot of techniques going on here, here because it's probably presented itself to him. Yes. But it's the technique is being aware, being aware spatially of what's around you, so that when you these things, you know, they're there, you just take advantage of it. Absolutely. And this is one of those things where, yeah, this is like a gift. I would call it, it as a street gift, photographer. But you have to take advantage of it. Absolutely. You know, we yeah. get gifts occasionally, but it's this thing. You know, the harder you look, or the harder you try, the lucky you get. And you know, Vinit's got a little bit lucky there, but hey, take advantage of that luck Absolutely. when it presents to, to you. Absolutely. And talking about the the luck uh, about the dog with the tail before, there you can see that it isn't luck. It's no. just skill, mm. eye, and just work in the picture. Mm. Mm. So there is another one that is just Absolutely. Perfect. I mean, there are a lot of dogs, random dogs in India, so yeah. it's a good subject to do. But um, yeah, there's quite a few dogs in his own portfolio. There is a lot of dogs in his portfolio. <laughs> yes, um, but you know, why not? Why not? Because the, if they work this way, sure. Um, I've always, I mean, I've tried to put the odd random dog in a picture when I'm taking street mm-hmm. photography in India, but I never use them to the sort of extent that he is. And uh, I think he's on quite a wide angle lens. I think he's on a like a 28 or a 35 mil Possibly, lens yes, on his Leica. I think so. he uses the Q2 as well. He uses the Q2 as well. Yes. But um, yeah, so I, I, I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, short insight into sort of Vinit's work. Um, go check him out. Honestly, you'll probably spend hours uh, looking at his um, his Instagram page. You might have surmised we do like him. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, you know, thanks for tuning in. Please give us a nice big thumbs up. And Make some subscribe. comments as well. Subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll look yeah. forward to seeing you again real soon. So uh, it's goodbye from Mark and And Flavio. Goodbye. Goodbye.